What's going on guys? This is Mia Sin. I actually wanted to make a deck profile and a testing video on Generator. Well, the testing video isn't necessarily confirmed. You guys are gonna have to smash the like and subscribe button if you want me to keep on making videos on that deck. But I couldn't really make a combo video on this because it's not like super combo oriented. It's kind of like more of a control deck in a way. If I'm showing combos, I'm not really showing combos, but flow of execution. So if you have that and literally nothing happens, look at what you can do in like three, four turns. Well, Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating it a little, but you get the gist of it. Anyways, uh, again, before this video starts, make sure you do all oh, the beautiful package deal. And now let's jump right into it. So I'm playing Too Hard, which is the only generator I believe could actually, well, should be played at two. The other ones are super bricky. If you play too many generators, you're just gonna brick. And I'm also trying to play Neuron cards in the deck, so I have more than one just win condition. Because if you're just relying on one specific field spell to win, I don't believe your deck does that much. And also, when you're playing more field spells, you get to play set rotation so in other words you playing neural network actually increases the consistency of your deck and in theory you could go neural network for calling 7-4 monsters mix saryuja and then draw four potentially dig into that boss stage and whoa merry christmas with the field spell that you weren't playing before all of a sudden you have your boss stage in other words it's maybe like seven extra copies of your boss stage in certain situations and when you have neural network and your boss stage it doesn't conflict whatsoever it's really good you get to make appaloosa and then you get to activate the boss stage on top because your network wasn't doing anything anyways. Literally Happy Land City from there. The majority of your extra deck definitely isn't needed at all. You could be playing Pot of Extravagance, but if you do that, you cannot play Numerot Network, which kind of sucks. But yeah, two Har, one Mardell, which is the plant. Uh, some people play Lone Fire Blossom, but if you play more than three normal summons, you are going to break quite often, especially considering the fact that we are playing Numerot Network, so we don't want too many normal summons, trust me. One Ur <laughs> Utkarda. Uh, this card actually banishes cards on the field. It does target, and it does tribute two monsters which is kind of expensive but it's it's a great card nonetheless and one hella which is monster reborn shout outs to thor's sister well this is thor's sister uh, they're actually all uh, nordic uh, cards by the way nordic not as in nordic but uh, as in the nordic mythology so yeah don't go thinking that these cards have synergy with the nordic monsters <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much it so five big boys uh, some people are playing six seven eight nine which is if your first row in, in your deck profile is just a bunch of big monsters you're going to break way too often but yeah uh, three Lopter. This is basically Lone Fire Blossom for the deck, but a little better because it summons any of your generators and it's also during your opponent's turn as well. It's just during either player's main phase. And you don't necessarily have to tribute itself. You can tribute just a generator monster. And that includes the tokens because it says tribute and not send from the field to the graveyard, which is fantastic. Also, it gains a thousand attack and defense during your opponent's turn. Yeah, I mean, all your generator monsters, so they become even harder to jump over by battle. This card's really scary. Three Neuron Wall. Uh, sometimes the in-hand effect can actually catch people off guard it's not just a card that activates neuron network no 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 it's also a like a swift scarecrow or, or battle fader in a way oh yeah i hate saying that the three th triple tactic talents i honestly didn't really know what else to play yeah if you want to play like hand traps you technically could but if you play hand traps in a format where the cross out designator exists you're almost just asking to get cross outed <laughs> in a certain uh, to a certain extent so i like to play cards that people don't necessarily play but at the same time tactic talents is kind of a card that could get hit by cross out same thing with Call by the Grave, but the rest, honestly, nothing is really cross-outable. Nobody plays Forbidden Chalice, which is the only other kind of tech card that I'm playing. Upstart, Terraforming, uh, no-brainer, both of them are just no-brainers. Terraforming for like a bunch of field spells is just great. Uh, Boss Quest, this card is like a worse version of Machina Redeployment, because you have to specifically reveal a generator monster in your hand, and then you add two spells and traps. Now, this is actually good when you draw the big boys, because they go back into the deck, you get to special summon them next turn with the boss stage. Stage, and you also get the boss stage and the boss fight so you can trigger that effect of boss stage two times to summon from the deck so it's really cool anyways tune your round calling because your extra deck allows you that luxury of be able being able to resolve that twice uh, sometimes people play decks where that's just impossible but in this situation you can a call by the green triple chalice so going second against tri brigade for example you have a chance to win through the omen so i'm not a really big fan of uh, ghost bell it can just negate it be get negated by appaloosa and this deck is not supposed to lose to appaloosa you win with respect cards like these two field spells when they resolve they kind of kill your opponent why lose to a card you have no business losing to set rotation
rotation again so he can play these cards. Also happens to be an out to Mystic Mine. And then three boss fight. Uh, this card allows you to set, you, well, activate even better. Activate your boss stage and immediately makes your opponent draws one card. So that will immediately trigger the boss stage to summon a generator monster from your deck. As well as summon as many generator tokens as possible and attack but destroy them during the end phase. Now if you're playing the fire monster, instead of destroying them during the end phase, you can just, just destroy one generator monster or beast warrior instead. And all the other token monsters are gonna die except for one, obviously, for the maintenance uh, ability of now Nagel Farm. But I think this is a little too gimmicky. You don't necessarily need that to win. Anyways, Metaverse. This also activates a field spell directly from your deck or add it to your hand. So when your opponent goes Lightning Storm or Dust or whatever, you don't have to activate the card. You can just add it to your hand and you're good. But unfortunately, that part of the the effect makes it lose to Miss uh, to Ash. Sorry, uh, three Solemn Strike and three Solemn Judgment. Again, uh, shockingly enough, even the trap cards here also out Mystic Mine. You can link off your own cards and then strike yourself. So you don't need back removal even in this kind of deck. And these cards are just overall good. I mean, Strike is good going first and second, but Judgment is only good going first. So a little bit less good, but Strike and then Strike. But it does negate blowout cards, which Strike doesn't necessarily always do. It just neg negates more relevant cards because the majority of the decks need to rely on monster effects more than just spells or traps. And this only negates summons. So against established boards, it's not that great. And also paying half your life points early game equals to 4,000 life points, where a strike early game is only 15, always 15. So late game, when you're on super low life points, maybe judgment is going to make you pay less. But like I said, early game, definitely really important. So strike paying 15 only is great. But yeah, uh, the extra deck isn't super relevant, except for uh, what you actually get to summon, which is kind of relevant. So I don't know why I just said that. Zeus, Enter Blathnir, and Jormangadr. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, those, these two monsters, uh, they're actually summonable off of your generators. And then Zeus, you just slap it on top of any of these guys. And then we are playing Sanya, which can only be summoned on top of Akam, if I recall correctly. So this one has specifically to be played at two. And then you get to play either whatever, five or six other gener uh, so generator. Numeron monsters. At least one of them has to be a two of. So your Numeron calling can summon the, the first time four. And then the second time three or four, if you want to go for four, four. I'm not going to explain any of these guys because they do the exact same, except that Akam can turn into Sanya, uh, which banishes every monster on the field, by the way, when it's summoned. So it's an Alta Dragoon if your opponent had to use the, the negation effect on something else. And then we are playing Underworld Goddess, which allows you to link uh, using your opponent's monsters, which is really nice because if your opponent doesn't Dragoon negate, you can literally just go like link all of your monsters with your opponent's Dragoon for Underworld Goddess and then use the effect, negate everything else. And if your opponent doesn't have like an Imperm specifically that targets, it's not going to be able to work because it's unaffected by card effects that do not specifically target it, which is really cool. And on summon, it's kind of like a baby Dark Ruler no more. And also has an effect that is very similar to Ghost Bell in a way. Uh, when your opponent activates a card or effect that includes special summoning a monster monsters from the graveyard, quick effect, you can negate the activation. So it does a lot in one, which is really cool. But yeah. uh, Scaldi, Tapalusa, and Mega Clops. These are super no-brainers when you're playing the Neuron Network with Calling. And that's pretty much it for the main deck and the extra deck. The idea section or side... Well, that's definitely not a side deck, but idea section, I have Naglfar. Uh, the Valkyrie cards with Diviner of the Heralds, but these are just super bricky. Same thing with Lone Fire Blossom. It's just going to increase your normal summon count, which isn't what you are aiming for. Uh, hand Traps could be played, but again, I'm not really asking to get hit by Cross Out and Call by the Grave. Even though uh, the Neuron Wall and the Lopter could get hit by Call by the Grave, but the other generator monsters do not. And even when you're using their effects, you're tributing tokens. You're not really tributing like actual real monsters that go to the graveyard as cost. So Call by the Grave against this deck doesn't really do too much. Yeah, sure, it's just a one of, but why not try to optimize things as much as possible? Consecrated Light is a card that you would be summoning off of the second effect of Diviner when it's tributed by Hierarchy. <laughs> Hierarchy, what is this? Neither player can normal or special summon dark monsters or declare an attack with a dark monster and can be destroyed with by battle with the dark monster and you take no battle damage from that effect uh, that battle so yeah it's kind of only good against dark based strategies and yeah nine live cat which is another rank nine that you could play demise of the land it's like a worse version of metaverse with trap trick and boss room which are a little sus to be honest but that's pretty much it for my generated deck profile of course if you want a testing video just make sure you smash the like and subscribe button and that's pretty much it thank you for watching i'll see you guys next time. Peace.